Hello, Wargamers, and welcome to our Warhammer 40k Battle Report today. I am Luca from MiniWarGaming.com, joined by my first-time guest, Min, all the way from the Bay Area, California. Quite a long trip. We'll be playing 1,500 points of Imperial Knights against the Word Bearers, completely undivided Chaos Space Marines. We play and call it work. Mini War Gaming's Warhammer 40k Battle Report. Let's take a look at my word bearers today. I wanted to go with the similar list I usually run, but no marks at all. And actually, incidentally, no enhancements either, because I filled up my points rather quickly. Now, leading the entire thing, I have a Chaos Lord in Terminator armor, and he is going to be joining a unit of honored friends in the form of Chaos Terminators today. And they're all going to be what you see is what you get for their loadouts. And again, all undivided. So mostly going to be relying on profane zeal and a lot of rerolls to hit. My next character will be a Master of Possessions, being represented by the old Erebus model here. Everyone loves to hate him. Now, he's gonna be joining a unit of five possessed. I didn't wanna run a big, nasty possessed bomb for this game, so I just have two units of five possessed. It does give me the option of another unit operating independently elsewhere, and uh, some counterplay mechanics against the one unit that the Master of Possession will be joining. I'll have a Dark Apostle over here, a shadow of his former 9th edition glory for the word bears, but that is just a good font memory for myself. He'll be joining a unit of reinforced accursed cultists. And then the last few elements of my list will be two units of legionnaires. They'll have a melted gun in each squad and the heavy melee weapon on the sergeants and then otherwise bolt guns. One land raider with the combi bolter on it and inside of that land raider there will be ten chosen of chaos. Again, everything undivided and we're going to see where the dice go with this list. That's it for today. Let's go see what Mint is bringing with the Imperial Knights. Hey guys, my name is Min. I'm from the Bay Area. Uh, so I brought here 1,500 points of Imperial Knights. Uh, leading them is my Serestus Atropos. He is the Warlord with the Revered Knights Enhancement, followed by this Serestus Knight, the Asheron, with his nasty little uh, flamethrower right there. Followed by in support is that little Vindicare Assassin. So if you've got a character, you gotta watch out for your head. So, and lastly, we have the Knight Crusader. Uh, what you see is what you get. This was actually painted by my friend Leland, who runs a small commissioning workshop in California. Um, a little bit about myself. I work for a nonprofit in which we use board games and, uh, and art to help stimulate social emotional learning for kids. Um, his commissions actually help support our nonprofit. So if you guys are from the Bay Area, California, or anywhere in the United States and you're interested in helping a nonprofit, no, please look him up. His hashtag is Recycling with a Vengeance. And then and he's willing to donate a hefty portion of his commissions to help support our nonprofit. And all of that information about the Commission Painter will be available in the description down below if you want to check it out yourself. Now, today's mission is a dead simple mission. We got priority targets as our primary, and we're going to be playing that on a Hammer and Anvil style deployment. So, if you're unfamiliar with Hammer and Anvil, it is deploying along the short table edge across from one another with five objectives, three in no man's land, one directly in the middle, and then one in each player's deployment zone. Very standard. Scoring is going to work, well, as it usually does in this mission. Starting in the second battle round, going towards the fifth, at the end of each command phase, you will score five victory points for each objective marker you control, up to a total of ten per turn. That only really matters if you're kind of controlling two of them, but at the end of the battle is where you get a lot of victory points. You'll get five for every objective you control, up to fifteen per player, and that is for priority targets. This is the one where only objectives matter. Now, both Min and myself will be playing with tactical objectives, which means we're going to be drawing random secondary cards throughout the game, two per player, and you'll score up to 40 points in secondaries there. Now, I've been toying with tertiary objectives in my Leviathan mission games, and the feedback has been good, so I'm going to continue playing with them, and I'll remind everyone one more time what those are. Well, maybe I'll remind you in the future again still, but at the end of the game, you instead of the painted army bonus, you will be awarded four victory points if you destroy the enemy warlord. You will be awarded two victory points if you destroyed a unit in the first battle round, and you will be awarded three victory points if you have a unit in the opponent's deployment zone at the end of the game for a total of nine additional victory points from tertiaries instead of the 10 for the painted army bonus. I feel like for the video, it gives a little bit more interaction and it gives a little bit more weight behind the warlord kill and just action in general. 
So again, I want your feedback down below in the comments what you think about it. We're not playing anything competitive here. We're trying to make good content and showing what cool things you could do with the game of Warhammer 40k if you're willing to play outside of the book a little bit. And hello to all of you lovelies. Don't forget, if you want to come by and play war games with us here at Mini Wargaming, simply go to miniwargaming.com slash challenge for all of the details. You'll talk to Josh. He's the guy with the beard. Figure out all the details there. Obviously 40k, obviously Sigmar, more than welcome. It just takes a little, it's like longer than you might think for some games. So if you want to come out in the future, plan it out now. I'm always looking for Lord of the Rings. He's always looking for Marvel Crisis Protocol. So those are kind of like passion projects. You kind of come in right away with those ones if you want. But hey, we're in Welland, Ontario, which is near Niagara Falls, 20 minutes away. So if you're familiar with the falls, you'll be familiar with where we are as well. See you soon. And one more thing to note, there will be a post game at the end of this video. So if you're watching the video, you kind of see where it's going, or maybe you want to move on to something else, but you want us to do a little, little bit of a podcast, just jump to the end of the video. It's just uh, two old guys talking about Warhammer. We're going to go into some details about the nonprofit that Min organizes as well, and what it's trying to accomplish in California. So see you there as well. We're going to go play some Warhammer now. We're going to do that thing. Just gonna show off our chosen battlefield a little bit before we deploy our models on it. We got our three objectives up the middle here. The Tar River, the oil spill here is just aesthetics. It's just there to make it look, to break up that middle there. Uh, the tar pits themselves can provide some cover, I suppose, but for the most part, everything else is kind of uh, self-explanatory. Uh, we got ruins, obscuring ruins, sorry, more obscuring ruins over there, more over here, rock facings, lots of cover in the middle of the battlefield as we're rushing up towards things. We got one objective obscured back here, and we got one objective obscured behind the ruins of this building. We actually have the Vindicare already deployed, kind of hiding out in the ruins over here. Perfect place for them. So we're gonna have like the Imperial, we've already figured out the Imperial Knights are gonna be on this side. The forces of the Chaos Space Marines are gonna be on this side. And uh, we're gonna have some fun uh, deploying here. Now to give a shout out to some of the terrain here, uh, we got a battle mat from Gray Matter Gaming. It's a new company, if you've not heard of them. They've only just come out in the last year or so. So if you want to check out their content, I want to say, but they're, what they have to offer in battle mats and other gaming accoutrements, you can go check out their website. It'll be in the description down below. A lot of green leaf terrain and a lot of printed stuff from us here at the Mini War Gaming Forge from other companies, but you'll be able to check all that out by going to the Forge and all of that fun stuff. I will be right back after we're deployed our armies. And like I promised, we are back and deployed. I'm on this side, I have my master possession and possessed. Havoc's unable to deploy up there, but more importantly, they want to hide behind it anyway, so there's a walk up there on the first turn. A cursed cultist ready to run right up the middle and be bullet sponges with the mm, dark apostle inside of them. One unit of legionnaires behind the rocks. My chosen in a land raider. And over here, possess just five possessed on their own, gonna go up this flank. In reserve, I have my chaos lord, my warlord. Uh, with the Terminators uh, ready to deep strike. I have a unit of one, one unit of Legionnaires in strategic reserve, and then the Chosen are just in this. And then what do we got on this side over here, Min? We got, well, three Chaos Knights and an Assassin. Well, not Chaos, we're, we're Loyalists. Sorry, my bad, my bad. Regular Knights, <laughs> not Traitor Filth. We got the Questorus. What's this one called? This is the Serastus Atropos. All right, I can't remember any. Yeah, I think I'm, I, I'm not very. Uh, this is the Atropos, and this is the uh, Asheron. Asheron. All right, he's got the chain sword with the big giant flamer and the the bolter built into it as well. Ah, uh, that's it'll be a nice, easy game. That's usually the case with knights, anyways. It's mm -hmm. kind of quick to the point, right? Uh, we're gonna roll off to see who goes first here, and uh, we're gonna draw some cards. And we're gonna play some freaking Warhammer. I'm gonna roll off now. Uh, it's Chaos Knights. First turn. Loyalist Knights. Sorry, I'm gonna keep saying that. I don't know why, because I wanted to play Chaos Knights, and I figured the asymmetry of like knights mm -hmm. versus like a full army typically looks a lot mm -hmm. better. And Chaos Knights versus regular Knights is fun to do every now and then, but I felt like I've done it a lot in the past, so mm -hmm. uh, that's why I keep saying Chaos Knights. I kept thinking Chaos Knights, but uh, it'll be Imperial Knights, turn one. We'll see what kind of cards you get. All right, guys. So the secondary objectives I have is area denial and extend battle lines. For area denial, I will be moving up the Asheron with his big flamer to give a warm welcome to those chaos cultists. <laughs> and to for the extending battle lines, I need to control my own home objective. I will be repositioning the Night Crusader 
to come in and basically open his Gatling gun later on those cultists while the Atropos will be moving up to push towards that land raider. It's essentially super easy objectives turn one, boom, boom, done, extending battle lines as well. This guy's gonna push up anyways. The only awkward one is the Crusaders got to reposition mm -hmm. to go over here, but it should still work out. Uh, do you have anything to do in your command phase, really? Oh, yeah, also, uh, in the reveal um, tactic step, I forgot I will be using the... So, obviously, his Warlord is not on the battlefield yet, so I will be using the Lay Low the Tyrant, and then when he pops up, he's going to have a surprise. Yep, that's the goal. To be honored, you got to kill my Chaos Lord, and hopefully that just doesn't happen. Bondsman abilities to do, uh, no armages in this one, only the big knights here. Current command points, we gain, and um, I do want to show off how I'm going to do scoring for this score sheet here at the end of every battle round. I'll update you guys. The D10's on the top, I'll be player one, mid will be player two. And these will be primary, so tens and singles, and then secondaries, tens and singles. And this is where we'll keep track of our tertiary scores down here. Uh, something like this is available on the Forge if you like what you see. You can just buy the STLs and print them yourself if you have a printer, and they're all made to order as well. And they come in uh, just plastic if you want to paint it yourself as opposed to the colored plastic here. And they come with the D10s when you order them as well. And to no one's surprise, the knight movement phase was very simple. So the warlord just boop, 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 up to the middle here. Oh, that's actually the warlord. So he just, he kind of backed up a little bit because we don't need to expose him yet. With this mission, you only need two objectives. So area denial and extend battle lines are both accomplished right away with that one move there. That's the Acheron. The Acheron. Yep. Mm -hmm. Acheron, yep. Uh, the Crusader repositioned back here, and then the Atropos just moved back there, and that's kind of it. We're gonna go right to shooting. And if anyone didn't notice, we do have the Vindicare Assassin deployed on the upper level of the building, surveying all before him. We're gonna start the shooting phase off with the Vindicare Assassin taking a opening salvo shot. Boom, into my Dark Apostle. All right, Vindicare Assassin's gonna do the opening shot with his shield breaker round, hitting on twos. Oh, oh that's, that's six to that's, hit. So that's dead shot. That increases the damage by three on a critical hit, which is nice. And I'll take a battle shock on them too. I okay. think that's like no matter what though. And then his toughness is uh. But it's like four. So, so we're wounding on threes then. Sixes are spicy though. Sixers are devastating. Well, not so much. It wounds. I don't get an armor. Sa it, so the dead, sh the shield breaker round is once per game. No, no saves of any kind allowed against it. Mm -hmm. Now he does have a feel no pain because of the accursed cultist. However, I don't think it'll matter here because this is a D3 plus three shot. And plus sorry, D6, D6. Mm. Oh, sorry, six plus D3 damage because of the six to hit. So six, seven, eight damage on that Dark Apostle. With the precision rule, uh, Min actually decides where it goes and it goes on that character. And uh, we're gonna have our Dark Apostle roll five feel no pains. So that's exactly what's gonna happen here. I, I believe in it. I believe in it, it's gonna happen. It's a six up feeling of pain, so he's dead. Uh, to almost twice over. <laughs> it's the kind of shot I want to see all the time. That's what the Vindicare is for. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I do owe you a battle shock check on them. That's uh, for the dead shot rule. I believe they're probably battle shocked without the uh, Dark Apostle leading them. I don't know if it matters too much, but it's good to note. Uh, he's, his two little acolytes are still left hanging around, though, and we got a little bit more shooting to resolve. Well, after that very impressive shot, we are going to move on to the Knight Atropos, and we're going to fire all of the guns into the Land Raider. All right, starting off, he is going to use his high intensity last cutter right <laughs> over here. D6 shots, sustained one. So we're getting four shots. Not bad. I will be using Dark Obsification here to obfuscate the target. So it's negative one to hit. It is undivided, so he doesn't get the Nurgle benefit. But it'll be a little bit harder to hit. However, the Atropos, you mentioned it gets plus one to hit vehicles. Yeah, it has a macro extinction protocol. Um, <laughs> if that's a targeting a monster or a vehicle, adds plus one to the hit roll. So it negates your obfuscation. So we'll just have base hits then. Yeah, so hitting on threes. Sixes are spicy. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, not Okay, well, I be... will count myself lucky. Lucky hey, on you that one. three twos. All right. And then this is a strength... 16? Strength 14 on this one. Oh, three to wound. Yeah, I'm only toughness 12. All right, three to wound. Hey. That's a six to wound. It's not devastating. Not either. devastating. So minus three AP. Okay. Minus three AP, but we do have cover for the rocks in the way here. So we're looking at effectively a one-up save that goes to a four-up save with the math on that. Oh my God, the cover saves us. Oh. Land Raider strikes again. All right. Next gun we're now gonna be using is the Graviton Singularity Cannon, and we're gonna use the Singularity Mode. 24 inches, D3 shots. Pew! 
we the, get two shots. So it's going to be hazardous and devastating wounds. That's what how mm -hmm. that's how the profile changes here. And, and hitting on threes. Oh, two fives. Good two start. Good fives. start. These are devastating wounds. So sixes are real spicy here. Otherwise, you need threes to wound me. Okay, and then so we only threes to wound. Boom! 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 boom. Oh, oh you, have the, you get to reroll one of those though oh, for the uh, yeah. nighthouse thing. Okay, okay, they so did errata it. It's not okay. every roll of one. It's only a single roll. Single of one. one. Six. Ah, oh, you gotta right. roll better, Min. You gotta nope. roll better. All right. I, I guess the vindicator assassin took all the luck with him. <laughs> and then we got the Akron here in the middle with this big flamer and the, whatever that big bolter is too. We'll figure that out in a okay. second. Before that, we do have to do the hazardous roll for this uh, atropos. It is. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Hey, it's only three mortal wounds. Okay. You should have a six up feel no pain though. Hey, feel no pain? It's from their detachment rule. There we oh. go. Oh, now if you're armored, it's five ups. Currently only six ups, so three damage. All right. And six. then we'll go ahead and fire this guy. Didn't know the Atropos has 22 remaining wounds. Mm -hmm. of it. He had 25. Yeah, 25 wounds. Now he's down to 22. All right. All right, now we're going to use this flamer to uh, give the cultists a very nice uh, barbecue uh, thing. Would the bolter like to go in oh, there no, as we're, well? We're going to, and then, then the bolter will go in there Follow too Follow up, well. gotcha, yeah. 2d6, torrent. Right. Seven, average. It's the strength of this attack. All right, this will be strength eight, minus one AP, two damage. Plus twos to wound, I believe. Twos to wound. I'll double check. Just seeing how many twos I've been getting. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, all, that's, all, that's pretty good. All got through. Well, how about this? The threes definitely work there. And that's seven wounds then, AP1. I don't really have a cover save, or I don't really have a save. If I got cover, they would get cover. That obviously ignores cover, so no damage, uh, no saves there. That is seven saves at two damage each. We're going to take these on the little guys first. They're only one wound each, so uh, there's seven of them. I'm going to do some fast die rolling here. So if I roll any sixes... I have to re-roll it into another six to pass. Otherwise, seven die. Seven are dead. Easy as that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just burnt to crisp. Now the twin heavy boulder. Boop, 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 boop. All about one. And uh, wounding on threes is strength five. Boop, boop. Oh, nice. Excellent. Well, uh, okay. I, uh, one. Okay, and then minus one AP. Yep. I'll take them on. Ah, whatever. I'll do the little guys. I don't really mind too much. Mm -hmm. uh, they won't get cover, so... They feel their feeling pains. They're dead. Boom and a boom. We got just those ones left. We got one little guy left, essentially. And we got to resolve the Crusader who's sticking around in the back. We got down this way here into some of the poor accursed cult. We're gonna do everything into the accursed cultist. He's obviously tall enough to see over this. I'll get cover, but not much. A single one. Here's the Avenger Gatling. Boom. Should just be threes to hit. We're rolling a one. A rolling a one. B -b 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 a nope. look a one. Threes to wound. And boom. On the one. Hey, it helped. 11 when he hits their AP2, so cover won't really matter for them because they only have a five up with cover. Uh, the I'm going to put the first two on these guys. They get a feel no pain from the unit, so see if they can survive it. No, they're both dead. Uh, we're going to try that guy there for the third one. Uh, that's both the feel no pains. Boom. All right, so I still have to resolve eight more. Per a course, cultish, I'm going down here. So I'm going to do these. Ah, uh, uh, it's probably not like it's one. Two dead. Six more to go, so uh, oh. makes that dead. So we still have four more to go, and there's four of my models left, so chances are I'll survive, I guess, but there's still a battle cannon mm -hmm. to do and the carapace weapon after that. So, oh, oh feel the pain's nice. one of them, very good. So it takes two damage, and there's still two more to go. This guy has one wound left then, and then he will die. And then there's one more to resolve on that guy. We'll have, he's got one wound left on him. So that's the Avengers. Strafes and kills them. Plus eight on the rapid fire battle cannon coming in. Boop. 11. <laughs> 19 <laughs> shots. shots. So it's in, it is within rapid fire range. I'm just, they're like dead. We'll roll it, but they're super dead. So it, it means it's 2d6 plus six, but there was nine models in the unit when it declared them to attack. So it's a further plus two, I think. All the same. Probably be plus one, but all, even 17 would kill them. Probably a little overkill, but let's see what we get here. Ooh, twos to wound. Twos to wound. Yeah, boom. All right. No rerolls used them earlier, but still mm -hmm. five to eleven. Um, no, normally a minus one AP, but because you're in Ooh, cover, you get, get your you get your six plus armor <laughs> save and three damage each. Twelve saves at six up. Let's see. Well, cover helps with one. I'm just gonna pull them. <laughs> I'm not gonna okay. bother with the finagling the feel no pains. They are flattened, and that is less things I have to work with. 
poor unit never stood a chance. It's a giant rapid fire battle cannon crater and a lot of bullet holes <laughs> from the Avenger Gatling gun. Wait, it's all smoke, wispy, wispy uh, smoke coming and from the tricorses. Gore and horrible. Those are out of here. So let's go ahead and charge. This guy is within 12, but like 11 and a half inches away. So it's an 11 inch charge for Mr. Knight. To Mr. Get Asheron. In. All right. And Survey says nope. You could reroll it if you want to. Nah, nah. All right. That will be the end of, not Chaos Knights, the Imperial Knights, turn one. You get area denial for five victory points because I'm not anywhere near mm -hmm. it. And then on top of that, you get extended battle line as well. That's and fine. you got first blood. That's true. Two additional victory points on the tertiary there. We are going to go into my turn one now. It does remind me we had supply lines, so we forgot to roll for that earlier on a four. Ooh. Nope. Okay, I was going to say, the reason we didn't roll for it because nothing was there in the command phase. But it didn't matter because you didn't get the four up anyways. Mm -hmm. So I'm drawing, bring it down. I got a knight right in my face here. So if I could pull this off, which I'm not saying I can't, we'll get some victory points for that. My other card is engaged on all fronts. And that's not going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, this is this would be the the Acheron here. The, the, the would be the, the Acheron. I've always called it an Acheron. I don't know. I'm not too sure what the right pronunciation. Oh, is. Oh, the French. Like, it'll be Acheron. Acheron. And since this is a French themed army with Joan of Arc <laughs> hiding in the back. Yeah, we do have a Joan of Arc knight over there in the corner. Uh, Acheron works for me, and uh, my French Canadian background there will. But <laughs> not really. I just into the French stuff a little bit, I suppose, but I don't practice it anymore, so it's barely there. Anyways, the target for bringing it down will be there. I don't have to declare, but that's the most logical one. Uh, engage in all fronts. I just don't have a way to get here. Not really, so it's not going to happen. If I, if I had that next turn, I could do it a little more confidently. Uh, otherwise, my command phase, I'm going to roll for supply lines back here on a 4+. plus. Ooh, on a 4+, plus, that's a 2, so I also do not get the command point. I don't think I got anything else to do in the command phase, so we're going to go right to movement. I am going to summarize my movement a little bit. We're going to run these guys out into the open. We're just going to rush towards the knights with all of our bodies and hope for the best. We are going to probably disembark and move the land raider. I'm going to try some tank shocking, some grenading to deal with this guy. I'm going to have these Havocs jump up into the ruins there, and then these possess are going to advance up and around to get pressure on this objective. And uh, I guess we'll be right back once I've done all that nonsense. And we're back. They advanced uh, three plus one because of the master possessions ending up here. One guy on the uh, the objective, the rest kind of hiding behind the wall. Our Havocs walked into the ruins. We moved our land raider up and disembarked to the Chosen. These Legionnaires, like I said, stayed back there. And then with the advance roll, they rolled a four naturally. They don't get any bonuses, but they ended up over here. And uh, we're going to go to shooting. I don't have a whole lot of shots, but you're going to rotate ion shields no matter what, I assume. Yeah, especially those bazookas there and those last cannons. Then they're all going right for them. I'm going to mm -hmm. try and I'm going to try and force my way through the invul and saber. Do as much as I can. Now, did, did this guy have an enhancement or? No. Which one had the reduce AP by one? Was the Crusader back here from Crusader. all attacks? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, so it's, it's only for Castorus, not for Serestus. Oh, I understand. Okay. Well, we're going to start off with these Havocs. They're going to fire their last cannons right at his face. You are, of course, going to rotate Ion Shields. Mm -hmm. Was going to profane zeal, then remembered, oh crap, I actually need two command points for grenades and the tank shock instead. So I'm going to roll their last cannons up normally. Hope for the best. I am always going to pray to the Dark Gods on the math of if I need threes to wound, it'll be sustained. If I need four or more, it'll be lethal. And uh, I'm just gonna hopefully remember my uh, my dark god prayer afterwards. So with that in mind, let's see if your ion shields hold. It makes it a four up invulnerable save, if I recall. Cause, correct. All right, so last cannons on threes, and they get to reroll ones because they're unmarked. Chaos undivided. Hey, all that six, we're gonna have five hits because of the sustain. Please toughness 12, I lied. That is not a sustain, that is a wound. It's a lethal. Okay. Uh, and then these are forced to wound. Two saves at minus, while well, you're in bone, right to your four up in bone. And rotating, oh. oh. We're gonna save the reroll. We're gonna hopefully see not a whole lot of damage here. So these are D6 plus one damage each. So a total of plus two. It's only seven damage. Okay. And you have a six up feel no pain. Surely you'll be fine. You'll roll sixes now. One six. One. Six wounds on a plasma gun on the sergeant in there. It's one shot. I'm not gonna bother supercharging it. Uh, it hits, and oh, it wounds. Whoops. Right to your four-up pinball, and it's only one damage. 
Nope, fails. I end up one feel no pain. One I'll, feel no pain. Uh, you nope. feel the pain. And then I owe you a dark gods check. Leadership seven, they're okay. Bad, not bad. We're gonna move on to the land raider's gonna fire point blank Thank everything you. into his face. Heavy bolter, combi bolter, and the last cannons. Cause I only really have giant knights to target anyways. We're gonna start with the heavy bolters. I'm gonna go lethals on all their shots here. So heavy bolters, good start. Uh, we have one moon cause it's twin uh, lethal. And twin linked, strength five, two Ooh. wounds. Uh, minus one, so you have your four. Uh, okay. But unless he has a two up inherently, but we'll roll and figure Dice it out. A check. A three up, okay. To a four up. One. Okay, pass. it's two damage, so you have two feel no pains here. And do I do some damage? I do two yes, damage. Did. He's got, okay, 16 moons left. Got the combi bolter, four shots for rapid firing, one miss, one moon though for lethal. And nope, that ain't good. So you have one three up save. That does one damage if you fail it. Ah, you're good. And then the four last cannon shots, the scary one. Four shots from the last cannons, threes, no oh. fancy rules, fours, three invulnerable saves Ooh. from these last cannons. These are nasty. All right, rotate out, shields, let's see what you got. Hey, dice, it helps with one. Oh, damn. All right, I'm going to spend a command point to reroll re one, one of those. Rotate ion shields. And yes. Six. Excellent. So only D6 plus one damage. Uh, six still, but you have a feel no pain. Okay, this is a violent game. You make one. Five damage, he's got 11 left. Feeling the pain. Oh, um, not bracketed yet. Not bracketed yet, okay. nice. The Chosen are gonna fire, but before they fire, they're gonna throw grenades at the feet of the Titan here for one of my command points. Roll six dice every four up will cause a mortal wound. That's a casual five mortal wounds. This game is uh, <laughs> going very Rayleigh. my way. You have a feel no pain though. All right, let's see. Okay, nope. five more damage. Six wounds left. Keep these chosen simple. I just run bolt guns on them. Except the one guy has a plasma pistol there. They're gonna fire now and they're gonna pray. Oh, I gotta do the leadership check on the land raider for praying to the dark gods. He is not happy. The chaos gods are not ha not happy. He didn't one shot the knight. He's gonna suffer a mortal wound. 15 wounds left. I'm gonna go ahead and just fire them now. One guy's got a plasma pistol. The other guys have bolt guns. I'm gonna go with lethal hits here. So the bolter rounds, threes to hit. We're rolling ones because we are undivided. Ooh, I think the sixes would be enough for mortal wounds. The that, they're only wounds. You still get your full save against it. Okay. That's five wounds for lethals. That was not a six. And I need sixes to wound. Uh, okay, bolters now. do six wounds, but you have a three up save. Three ups. Yeah, you got feel no pains, and two of them. Two feel no pains. Bum, 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 bum. Nope. Hey, wow, chaos can deal with anything when they pray to the dark gods. We got a plasma pistol as well. We're gonna try a shot. Hits, uh, no, uh, strength seven. Ah, right to your invuln. Oop. Nope. Oh, one damage, not one gonna damage. supercharge it. So you gotta feel no pain though, sorry. Oh, uh, one, feel no pain. Okay, oh, you're good. never mind. Four. And then I do the leadership check for them. Nine, they're A-OK. -okay. That is it for my shooting. I am gonna go, I moved this guy forward to tank shock with him, but I realized I didn't have any command points for it. So I'm just gonna charge the chosen and surely they can do four damage. Mm -hmm. We will see. Boop. They roll a five. Mm -hmm. Charging in like that, I have no other charges because they blocked the land raider, for, first of all. Again, if I wanted to charge with them, I would have gone with him first. We're gonna pile in with these guys just to get them striking. Have you go over to here. And then we got all our chosen attacking and they're gonna pray for lethal hits because uh, they'll need the help. The chosen have power fists, so go ahead and resolve them first. They uh, three stay with their power fists. No oh. lethals and one reroll. Now these are only strength eight. I need fives to wound you. Boom, 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 boom. Only one. One five up. Two no damage. damage. So you get the feel, no pain. Oh. Ooh, you feel. I feel okay, it. Okay, both the pain. And then that's the power fist done. And then we just have eight guys with accursed weapons. It's going to be a third, sorry, 32 attacks with accursed weapons. Here's the first half. Uh, sixes are spicy because they're lethals. Oh, sorry, I got another one in there. Just going to go bloop. Take it real slow. Ah, oh, one move, one fail. Hit. Uh, three wounds. These are sixes to wound because they're only strength five. But I'll oh. roll four. Seven. Seven wounds at minus two on the first half. This is minus two. All right. All right. Fives. Oh, there we go. There's oh. your rolls. Only two go through. We oh. have a feel no pain. All right. Ooh. Got like a wound left. We have to do that 16 attacks again, though. All right. Threes. Sixes are good. Oh. I see a couple of sixes. Yeah. And the ones get re-rolled because we are undivided. That was a, a five. Three. Or a three even. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nothing there. Two wounding hits and three in total. And... Yep. Oh, feel no pains. You got to make three of them. 
Ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, Do you explode? Do I explode? Come on, let's blow up. Deadly demise would be huge. Yes. Oh, yes! <laughs> That's, uh, what's his deadly demise? What is his deadly demise? D6 plus two damage. Uh, on, only two units are gonna be in range, but they're pretty big guys to get hit okay. by it. Start with this guy here, D6 plus two. Uh, three. Three! I got 12 left, and then my, well he's got 12 left, then the chosen is yeah, plus two, right? Plus two. That, they're three wounds each, that kills two of them. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do a leadership check. Uh, nine, they pass. Right, we're gonna lose you. And you, I suppose, will try and keep the power fist around, and we do get rid of the big guy. Uh, there's no real reason to consolidate. We're already near the objective. We got some cover to some degree here. They're just gonna have to hold, hope for the best here, and uh, all that good fun stuff. So, that is the end of my turn. I killed one of the three knights, so I counted very successful. And we're gonna score Bring It Down, and that's about it. But we also got first blood. That wasn't your warlord, was it? No. No, that's, the, that's right, that's this guy over here. Mm -hmm. So we get first blood ourselves. For two points, and then I think that bring. How many wounds was that big guy? Twenty something. Also, oh, that's. I think that's eight points on a tactical. Six victory points because it's tactical. It's five normally, and then plus one for being it drawn randomly. Let me get rid of engage in all fronts just for a command point. I didn't get the supply line one, so I want to get another command point here if I can. And like I said, I want to update the score for you guys at the end of the battle run. I'm just taking it up to turn two in our current command points as we go to turn two, but the score at the end of the first battle run would be eight for me and 12 for Min. So he's up by four. All right, so I got Investigate Signals and Defense Stronghold with my Lightnist. Yeah, Investigate Signals is a no bueno, but <laughs> a Defend yet. the Stronghold is definitely what we can do. Defend the Stronghold, that'll be worth three victory points at the end of my turn, unless I'm able to muscle you off of it. I don't know, I mean, I could try for it, but it's gonna be a suspicious one all the same. I don't believe there's anything to really do in your command phase. Nope. So uh, I'm gonna go right to movement. Crusader's just gonna hop over the fence, eyeing down the Land Raider and the Chosen, and defending the Stronghold. And then we gotta figure out what Mr. Atropos over there wants to do. He's gonna keep it where it is, because it's already in a pretty good spot. And for one command point, I will Rapid Ingress the Chaos Lord and his Terminator Bodyguard right there to give Min another target to shoot at. Hopefully they just don't die. <laughs> We're gonna go to shooting. What do you, do you know what you wanna do first? Yes, we're going to use the, um, the Avenger Gatling gun to shoot your chosen. What do you wanna do with the other guns? Um, and then, oh, and then probably the battle cannon will also go in that group. Um, the melted gun on here yeah, is actually in range now. right yeah. over there. And I guess we'll use the Storm Spear rocket pod to kind of like whittle them down over there. So main guns go over there and then the secondary guns go over there. I only have, uh, because of the rapid ingress, I only have one command point. I don't, uh, I'm trying to think of like what I want. I'm gonna dark obfuscate them to give them stealth. Okay. Negative one to hit, hopefully that saves a few of their lives. Okay. We're gonna start with the rapid fire battle cannon. How many shots are we looking at here? Base is D6 plus three, but with the blast, that'll become 2D6 plus seven. Effectively, yeah, because yes. of the rapid fire as mm -hmm. well, yep. 2D6 plus seven shots, boom. Seven shots average. So 14 in total. Fours. Because of stealth. Uh, and yeah. we want to use the reroll, the night rerolls on these ones. These are the most efficient ones, I think. Oh, oh. A one oh, to do a one. one. That's like the second time already. That is not unfamiliar so far. Yep. And then that's. These should... Oh, yeah, yeah. After. I was going to say these are going to be wounding on twos. Okay. We'll now be wounding on twos. Strength 10. Don't need Spicy. Don't even need the reroll. Mm -hmm. Get cover from the rock, but every fail is a dead guy. You kill three of them. Mm -hmm. Whoo! Just bang. Bang. And uh, do I want to lose the icon? Uh, or the plasma pistol guy? Whatever, I'll lose that guy. Keep the icon. Now the Gatling gun, lots of shots here. You still have a real one available. All right, getting on fours. I'm stealthy, please. Winning on threes. And you can reroll that one one if you want to. You still have that available. Boop, boop, boop. Nope, nope. All right, so four AP2. I'm going to start uh, these couple guys over there. They're going to have five up saves. Dead. Oh, sorry. They're two damage each, right? Yes. So that's gonna kill this guy. That's a power fist down. And then the next guy does not tank it. Oh, he dies too. T takes out two more of them. So not bad. He leveled the Chosen down to three. This is a very volatile game. <laughs> We're just gonna just hemorrhage models and units here. And then we have to resolve the melt -a gun mm -hmm. and then the Storm Spear rocket pod. On threes. melt -a gun Nope. Oh, unfortunately miss. And the Storm Spear threes. Rocket pod. One miss. And strength. Probably enough to wound on threes, unless it's Yeah, done. strength eight. Yep, threes it is. Hey, two of them. What's the AP on that bad boy? AP is two. So they'll have a one-up save in the ruins. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are gonna be three ups. 
We're all oh. taco cats for days. There you go. Then we go to the big guy. Or the, the Atropos. The Atropos. Now he's back to hitting on twos on the Land Raider. Oh, you going for the Land Raider? Fair. Yep. All right. So sustain um, D6 shots. On the laser cutter, whatever it's called. Yeah. The Atropos last cutter. One. Oh, he could if you want to. Yeah. There's a command point reroll. Oh! oh how, many, so how many shots is the D6 plus? It's going to be D6 shots at sustained. Oh, it's one. just D6 shots, I okay. Two's to hit. We got rerolls if you need them. All right, hitting on twos we with rerolls. Oh, 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 three oh. more hits. Oh, four more four, hits. Four more. The focus laser cutter. I'm gonna remember he's got plus one to wound vehicles. Forgot that for the first time. I thought it was only plus one to hit. It's plus one to hit and wound vehicles. All right, wounding on twos. Yes. And we have a reroll available if needed. Oop. Okay, no. that, that's. There's some rolling. Now we're talking here, dude. Minus three, we're gonna have cover from this rock here. So it's uh, four ups after everything is said and done. Boom, 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 boom. So we're gonna pass quite a bit of the mech. How much damage is it each? Uh, this is going to be four damage each. Boom, 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 that's enough to kill him. He's only get four, uh, three fails. That was a perfect combination of D6 shots and four sixes mm -hmm. for the sustain. Deadly demise. No, no. he's brought low quietly. Okay. Boom. And the um, the gravity gun would have gone into it as well. Just the laser cutter did so extremely really well. well. That was damn good. I like yeah. that. That's the kind of rolling I want us to keep that going. We get the ever exciting Vindicare assassin taking a shot at the master of possessions down here. He does have line of sight to him. Pew! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, out of everything to roll. After why are your rolls so polarizing? They're just all, all over, over the, the place. place, man. Come on. Well, I guess we got the impressive shot to begin with, but mm -hmm. okay, that is it. <laughs> that is it. Oh, we forgot to give you five victory points uh, at the start of your uh, primary because you scored that at the uh, start of your turn or at the end of your command phase. You also forgot to roll for your supply line, I think. Oh no, not, I have supply line on a four up. So I forgot mine. You got it. Okay, so okay. you actually have an extra command point. Uh, we are going to keep Defend Stronghold. We're halfway to defending it. Uh, going to get rid of Investigate Signal so you can draw another card in a future turn. It mm -hmm. won't give you a command point because you already got one, but Investigate Signals is kind of a dead draw for this night build. Mm -hmm. That will conclude turn two for the knights. We're going to go to turn two for Chaos Space Marines. We're just picking, we're pointing at things. We're just taking them off the table this game, apparently. My two new cards will be Behind Enemy Lines, which... Uh, I'm lucky I committed the Terminators where they are because they'll be able to charge into that position. And my second card will be Deploy Teleport Homers. That's going to rely on my Chosen not uh, drooling too heavily around the objective while being battle shocked. In my command phase, before scoring and everything, the only thing I really need to check is if they're battle shocked. Now, it's not that big of a gamble to roll it because I have these guys on this objective and my Legionnaires back there. So I'm going to get my 10 points on primary no matter what. But if they are battle shocked, they can't deploy teleport homers in the middle. So we're gonna roll it and figure out, uh, we're gonna let the dice decide if they can do it or not. I also need to check my supply line. That was something I needed to do in my command phase. These guys here are gonna secure it. Yes, we get a command point. That'll put me and Min at two command points because he discarded a card. So I will just go ahead and roll the Chosen's leadership up. I think they're leadership six. If they fail it, they didn't deserve to be here anyways. They pass. For scoring, I'll get five points for, I'm on three of the objectives, but I can only get 10 points. And that means the movement phase, it's gonna be kind of easy. We're just gonna move these towards the Chaos Knight. I'm gonna advance them up to the runes, and I'm gonna keep them kind of on this side of it to be near the objective. They're gonna reposition over here to investigate, deploy our teleport homers to get require uh, request assistance from space. And then we're going to have those possessed advance towards the Atropos. They won't be able to do anything but them now, but they're going to swarm in the objective. I have Legionnaires in reserve. I'm just going to hold on to them. They can't show up behind enemy lines this turn, so they're not going to help out too much. So they're probably going to be more useful on turn three. And we're going to move the Havoc. So I forgot to mention them in a more dynamic position to get some line of sight to Mr. Crusader. Like I said, boom, this is the position of the possessed with the master of possessions he's gonna hide behind the building now you got one shot one shot now chosen can advance and shoot so they can advance and do action so they're gonna advance behind the rock and they're gonna deploy teleport homer our chaos terminators just move through the ruins getting closer to the crusader and those dummies rolled a one on their advance so they don't really get too far but we got one guy behind cover and you why thank you <laughs> the chaos one that is exactly it come here boom and that is where that's only gonna be worth three victory points because it's in the middle not five and these Legionnaires aren't moving much. They're, they're sitting back there staying safe because uh, if they decide to move out of the cover in line of sight, they'll probably die to knights. And we're going to give you other things to worry about for now. So we're going to go to shooting. 
I'll just start with the Havocs. They're going to put their shots right at Mr. Crusader here. And he's going to rotate shields. I am not surprised. Feeling kind of spicy with these last cannons, I'm going to gamble and go for sustains. Okay against him instead with their prayer to the dark god. So I got four last cannon shots. I'm gonna go for a double profane zeal. So they're gonna profane zeal, which allows them to reroll hit and wound rolls. And then I'm gonna save another command point to profane zeal them in melee. So I'll start with the last cannons and I'll go down to one command point and start hitting on threes. Ah, to reroll everything. Cause I want sixes for sustain. Hi! Oh, okay, it didn't cost me anything, thankfully. Mm -hmm. And these are forced to wound with rerolls for profane zeal. Okay, three wounding hits. And four pin bones. Brown. Yeah. I assume we don't want to reroll it, just keep it as is. Yeah. Minus one. Boom, boom, boom. That was minus one AP. Uh, oh, you know what? With minus one AP. Oh, never mind. He has the enhancement for negative one AP, which means last games are going to be AP two. And you'll have cover there because of the rock and the building in the way, covering at least a, like a t molecule well, we'll of the model is yeah. all you need. And uh, these are three up saves on him. He's got three up, goes to a two up. Oh, minus two. No, minus two, it's four ups. So the two threes do still fail. No point in rotating, but you can reroll one of those if you want to. Okay, I won't. All right, so you still have two command points. Okay. And the two went through, this was the damage roll, I believe. So it's 10 damage because it's plus one on each one. Okay. So it's four and six. Feel no pain rolls, not too bad, making two of them. Eight do go through, bringing him down to, I don't, what does he got, 22 wounds normally? Point <clears throat> two. Got 14, 14 left. All right, not bad. And then I owe you a dark pack check, because I tried to. Six, I don't know. Yeah, they're six. Most Marines are six. I just want to double check. And the full rerolls to hit and wound is because they, they're they undivided. The whole army is undivided. So profane zeal is like pretty clutch for them. Oh, uh, the only other thing, well, they're going to, Start deploying the teleport homer, if I didn't say that already. And we're gonna fire the terminators in them. They only have bolters, so. Because of the chaos lord in the unit, I can use profane zeal on these guys, even though another unit benefited from it. It's a battle tactic, it costs zero. It's only on bolters though, and they already reroll hit rolls if they're doing a dark pact, but whatever. So they're gonna fire at him. They're gonna do a dark pact for lethal, and I'll see if I can get any damage off here. The profane zeal is gonna help more with the reroll the wound. 20 shots with the bolters hitting on threes. But they get full rerolls to hit because they got lethals on sixes. And uh, the Profane Zeal is technically doing it, but they already have, uh, what's it called? Uh, if they do a dark pact, they get to reroll hit rolls against their target. And the reroll. We only care about lethals. Chaos is the worst for this. Boom, boom, boom. Eight saves. Uh, these are fails. And I need six to wound here, but Profane Zeal is. Okay, two more. Ooh. Profane Zeal helps out here. Look at all these tacos. <laughs> All right, you have 10 three-up armor saves. And then a feel no pain afterwards. I expect to do a couple damage. Only one, nice, armor holds. Six up, feel no pain. Ha-ha, look at that, no damage. I guess gotta do the Chaos Lord's combi bolters. A couple shots, Bwamp. He hits, oh, whatever, I don't, I'm looking for sixes or devastating wounds here. I get to do re-rolls. One, feel no pain. Nope. Take that, Imperial Phil. So, one damage? Just one, yeah. <laughs> Be it for shooting, nice and easy. Uh, I owe you a leadership check on them though. They did a dark pact. Six, they're good. Then we're looking for a charge. Nine, we're in. However, the unit is technically slightly illegal in their loadout because oh. this is an old heresy build. So uh. they all have power fists and one guy's got a chain fist. Only okay. three of them are allowed to have a power fist. Okay. So a uh, guy with the bolter pointing out is technically the accursed weapon. Okay. They're gonna go ahead and fight because I have no other charges to declare. They will, for the third time this turn, do profane zeal. This one will cost me a command point though. They are gonna cheer for lethal hits, I think is what I wanna go for here. Profane zeal is gonna reroll everything. So I'll start with the guy's accursed weapon to get him out of the way. I do have a chain fist in there though. That could be scary. Attacks from the accursed weapons, hitting on threes with four rerolls. I'll take that for lethal because I'm not gonna get any through otherwise. And six to wound with a reroll. You have one save at minus two. I'm he up. makes it. And then, uh, I'll do the three power fist. These are the power fist to hit on threes. Sixes are lethal. Uh, I'm just feeling greedy. Whatever. Boom, 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 boom. We got these misses. Those wound. These hit. And I need fives to wound here with a reroll. I got three. Uh, nothing. So I got three at minus two. Minus one because we have the okay. armor. So four up. Three of them, that is. Uh, okay, only two damage. Okay. And then you'll have your feel no pains. Ba, 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 ba. Yep. Two additional damage. And then the last thing is the Chain Fist and then the Chaos Lord. Three attacks that hit on fours. 
Uh, I'll reroll that, I guess, for Profane Zeal. Yeah, these are anti-vehicle three up, so you just need threes to wound. And a reroll for Profane Zeal. These are minus one because of your armor. <laughs> so just four ups. <laughs> four damage, but you get feel no pains. And see if you make any of the feel no pains. You make two? two. Only two damage. We got nine wounds left, and then we have the Chaos Lord. He's got six attacks with his exalted weapon on twos. But I'm going to reroll everything because I want the sixes. Nice. We got three wounds for lethal. And these are six to wound because it's only strength five. Reroll for profane zeal. All right. Four saves at four up after everything is said and done. Okay. How much damage each? Two. You'll live. You'll okay. live. Do, 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 do. Okay. Make Ooh. three of them. So two damage there. And then you can have it. Feel no pain it on the sixes. And that two damage, right? Just two. Yeah. Okay. One. Nice. I'm down to eight. And that is all we can conjure. I owe you a dark pack check, which I'll fail. Chaos icon for them. So I suffer two wounds. You got one wound left on the, the accursed weapon guy. I was not able to stop your defense stronghold either. Very nice. Okay. Well, that is uh, it for me. You get to step on me back. Four titanic feet attacks. Hitting on threes. And you get to reroll a one. And we rolling this one. It helps. It helps. With strength there, yeah. Strength eight. Three to wound. And you can reroll a one if you get one. Oh, you do. Shows up again. Hey, what are the AP on these? AP one. <laughs> you can hear the <laughs> disappointment <laughs> in the voice. They have a two up save that goes to a three up. That's a fail. Uh, two damage. Stop. That is going to crush the life out of this one chaos terminator, leaving mm -hmm. me with the five remaining. And that will conclude my turn. Mm -hmm. I finished deploy teleport homer for three victory points. Mm -hmm. And I'm behind enemy lines with one unit. So that will give me two, three additional victory points. That's only a total of six on secondaries. But it means I'm not discarding anything either. Forgot to note, but Min does defend his stronghold. That's three additional victory points. And it'll allow him to get another card. And just an update on the score. Before We're technically in turn three now, but an update. I'll be at 24 total points. And Min is currently at 1820. So I'm up by four overall. And these are our current command points as we go into the turn of three. Well, unfortunately, I drew <laughs> Bring It Down. Unfortunately, the Land Raider's already dead. And deployed Tolper Homer. I cannot afford to not shoot, so I uh, drew bad. That's it's a risky thing with like the the big knight build. Yeah, it's uh, the cards aren't very kind. But the the hope is to all out just like flatten the enemy with your firepower. And so far, the pacing is pretty good. In your command phase, in my command phase, I am going to spend two command points for shoulder the burden to uh, because he did take damage in the previous round. So until the start of my next command phase. All of his movement, toughness, saves, leadership, OC is increased by one. All right. Including well. his hit rolls. Okay. Well, that'll help uh, fight off the big guns every tire. And yeah, so we have to see if at the start of the command phase, you get a command point for the supply line on oh, the floor plus. You might just get one more because that'll be all your command points. Hey, nice. You got one command point to play with because shoulder costs two and he does have to do a battle shock check, but his leadership is higher by one now. Leadership check on him. Roll high. Dope, dope. Five is probably good with the plus one. Because he's leadership six, you just need a five up to roll. So short of the burden, very big. <laughs> very big. Because as we go to the end of the command phase, you are now able to score five victory points for that. That'll bring us to movement phase. Though I assume this guy's going to stay right here. He's going to stay guns. right there. Yeah. yeah. And then the Atropos is going to come on over here, and he's going to tango with some possessed. He's going to try and uh, deal with them over there while I deal with this guy over here. And I think that's kind of it. We're done for the movie phase. <laughs> we got shooting to do. All right, so um, the blast weapons, because um, we cannot target in melee range, so the only thing you can really shoot are those guys over there. You got the Chosen or the Havocs as targets. Mm -hmm. um, so the Storm Spear rocket pods, the uh, Gatling gun, and the Melta gun, they're going to shoot down this way. Right, and then, yeah, the, we want to do the Havocs with the blast, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, we'll go ahead and resolve all that. We were off by one to bracket him, by the way, too. So shouldering the burden is going to completely ignore the negative to hit modifier here. So if he could pop off over here, we're going to have a pretty spicy looking night game here. Oops. Save my command points here and hope for the best. All right. Adventureverse. Hitting on threes. Threes it is. And we got rerolls. Uh, I don't know what the best thing to use the rerolls on. Definitely not the ones over here. Let's bring use a bigger gun. Boom, boom, boom. He didn't move either, so now he has sustained. Is it all his attacks or? All of his attacks as a um, as a knight uh, punishing salvos in your movement phase. If this model remains stationary until the start of your next movement phase, Ooh. this model's range of weapons have sustained one. There we go. 
four more hits. It's a new battle round, so I'm gonna use Infernal Right for zero command points. It reduces your AP by one. Okay. Try to keep my Terminators around a long, little bit longer. So threes. 12 only hits, not bad. Uh, they're normally AP2. AP2, and now down to AP1. Yeah, so I'll have three up saves against these. Uh, there's no reason to not roll these all at once. Oh, it's 13. Both oh, wait, no, it's 12, 12, 12, 12. perfect, okay. Don't roll bad, Luke, and then I don't get punished for rolling them all at once. Because I technically, if I rolled so badly, I killed all of them, he only takes one damage. I guess it doesn't matter, it's all the same save. So each pair of fails kills the Terminator. You've gone down two so far. Glues. Power fist, power fist. We'll keep the chain fist and that guy there. One melt a gun. Pew! Get a six and get two shots. Now oh, it's still yeah. a hit. And three to wound. Three to wound. Oh. oh. But you yeah. use your one wound reroll here, yeah. which I'd recommend. Yep. Hey, nice. Uh, Spicy. Uh, uh, melted two. Okay, doesn't matter. Should be my invuln save. Four up. Four up. We'll do the storm spear last. Three shots. That's exactly what it sounds like. You can do a reroll. Sorry, oh, no. that was a hit. That was a hit. Yeah. Was that a six? That was a six. Sustain. One more hit. And then you could right. reroll. You still have one reroll to yeah, hit yep, if you yeah, want bro. to. Yeah, okay. Okay. Oh. Two more hits with the storm sphere. Interesting. Uh, probably threes. The strength eight. Uh, strength eight. Yep. Threes. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. And a minus one with infernal rights. Oh, two up save goes to three up. We're good. Okay. How much damage is that? D6 each. Oh my gosh! The last thing to resolve is the rapid fire battle cannon. Uh, it is in rapid fire range, and you will get blast, so it's gonna be 2d6 plus 7 again. Boom, boom, boom. Ooh. Eh. All so right. Well, oh, I was running average before, so now it's just 10. Sh now it's gonna be 11 shots. <laughs> That's not bad. Still enough to kill him. Three used to hit. And save my command points, I think. Oh, it might be a mistake, but we'll see. Don't roll out of threes. Okay. okay. Two sustained hits in there too. So we add two more into there. And these are gonna be two to wound because this should be strength ten. Oh, nice. That's oh. a that's a hot looking roll. Mm. You're gonna be AP one, so I'm in cover. Three ups every. That kills three of them though. Boom, boom, boom. Three damage each. Kill sergeant and uh, these two last cannons, I guess. Bad. That'll resolve him, and we have the atropause to go against the possessed over there. The low intensity on the last cutter here. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do the uh, grab gun after. Four. Oh, terrible rolls. Is that a four? That was three. Oh, two and a one? Yikes, yeah. okay. Well, three shots hitting on. Hitting on, I believe. Just three hit. No monster. They're little monsters, but not mechanically. All uh, right, uh, one. You could, I'd save the rerolls for the other gun. Yeah. Yeah, the bigger gun. And then winning on threes. Oh, man. Today is just not his day. No, he is. Well, he. Punked the Land Raider, but at the yeah. wrong time, kind of. The grav gun over here to try and mess these guys up. We're going to do uh, the hazardous version of it for Devastating Wounds. This is just D3 shots. D3 blasts. So, D3 plus one. Yeah. Not bad. Bromp. Two! Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd be two and divs. Uh, sorry. Two shots from that one, hitting on uh, threes, I assume. Three, still threes. But you get to reroll one, a, a one. Okay, oh, never matter. mind. And that, and are, are these, oh, they're not sustained. They're, the sixes on the wound rolls are spicy, though, because they'll be devastating. Yep. All right, these are twos to wound, I assume. Yep, twos to wound. And you can reroll any fails. You have the reroll available. Perfect. All no right. devastating, but the AP is pretty high. Yep. AP is four. I'm just going to do invulns anyway, so invuln on that guy. He's a, he's a demon, and then he'll just keep, he's dead. What's the damage? Four? Uh, D6 pull, D6 plus plus, D6 plus one. All right, roll that up. I actually might live that. I doubt it. Okay. He might live. He will live. He will. Oh, jeez. We got the hazardous roll here. Come are on, you dude. kidding why are, me? Why are you like this night at your post? Uh, uh, I, I will spend the command point. You can command point reroll that three damage. Ah, six. Look at that. You could always, if anyone's unaware, that's one of the ones you uh, you can reroll uh, desperate breakout and hazardous rolls. Mister Assassin. Let's shoot. Let's just shoot one of those guys with the last cannon there. All right. Well, that's all I got left. The two last cannon guys. So okay. two to hit. Don't roll the one. Hey! Ooh. Oh. Well, that's a, that's a, uh, that's a roll. like deadly shot. I have to do a, uh, I don't know. Oh, it increases the damage of the increases shot. Increases the damage. That's all it really is. Yeah. All right, strength seven, three to wound. Oh. One. Oh, it would have been a three up. It would have been. Effectively kill a guy. Yeah. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing roll. No. These wound rolls. Not doing well on the rolls this turn. It's very, like I said, very polarizing. Good ups and downs. Up and down. Just in case I have to do a battle shock, they're good. Something about rolling a, that, that rule requires you to take a battle shock. I can't remember if it's if a guy dies or not, but we're good. Okay. And this is pretty much a guaranteed charge. So we're just going to walk up there and yep, say hi. Mind. Boop, right into the guy in base contact. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you, oh man. 
Yeah, no tank shocking here. Uh, this guy's gonna fight first, and then my Chaos Terminator is gonna try and beat up the Crusader. Yeah, over but there. So but he's shouldering the burden, so he's pretty durable. Yeah, so do the high intensity. It mathematically does a little bit more damage, other than this one wounded guy, which kind of sucks. All right, but. hitting on three, sustain one. Yep, get some sixes. Hey, there we go. Yeah, uh, you can re-roll the one. You might as well. Yep. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, Ooh. that's scary for me. That's two additional hits. These are. Strength, four, four, strength 14. And four damage each, yeah. So two's to wound. And you get a reroll on a one. Mm -hmm. Boom, 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 boom. Use the one reroll. So one's gonna fail. All right, just one fails. Seven saves at my demon save. Five ups. Just five ups. I gotta make a lot of them. Okay, I do. So that kills that one, and then two more die, because they're four damage each. Mm -hmm. At the average kill, so these three go down. We're left with these two guys. And my go, I got these, well, these guys are dead, technically. I got these Chaos Terminators and the Lord to go with. So he's gonna be pretty thick with uh, shouldering the burden here. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna use Profane Zeal here. I'm gonna just try and beat him up with what I got. I'll attack with the Power Fist, the Chain Fist, and then the Exalted Weapon in that order. I will call for lethal hits though, as uh, because it still gives them rerolls. That's why I'm not really gonna worry about the Profane Zeal. I'm gonna tr see if I can do more damage with those guys over there with Profane Zeal. All right, so over here we have, uh, okay, that's a good start. You have two wounds and a reroll. Doesn't help, but you are, so you're currently a two up save with Shoulder of the Burden and my attack is a minus one. So you're a three up save. Okay. Boop, boop, boom. Makes one. Two damage, which you have a feel no pain against. Bum, 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 bum. Two damage, he's got Two six damage. wounds left. And then we have the attacks of the Chain Fist on fours. With reroll though, they all hit. And threes to wound, because it's anti-vehicle. Uh, that's just two wounds that are, again, three ups. Oh, oh man, I'm just rolling bad today. No. Statistically, Four. I'm rolling bad. Four, oh. feel no pains. Oh. Oh, he's got two wounds left, and we got the Exalted Weapon. Oh, which man. are twos to hit. I'm gonna reroll everything because I need the wound rolls here. Okay, two wounds and one miss, and then these are six to wound. Just two saves. Ma minus one, and you have a two up save, so three up. Hey, oh. he lives. He lives. Barely lives, and he gets to fight back. Shoulder in the burden, so he's, even though he's bracketed, yeah. he's still hitting on All regulars. Three. Yeah. Steppy, steppy, steppies, you get to reroll. Boop, boop, boom. And I think you get sustained hits here as well, unless this has ranged weapons only. I think it's only range. It's only ranged weapons. Still, everything hits. Threes to wound. Strength eight. Nice. And no need oh. to reroll. This is a good roll. Uh, Four of them at minus one. Yep. Or is it minus two? Minus one. Minus one. Three ups. Ah, oh. can't get through Terminator plate. Someone's doing better three ups than someone else in this game. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. My two possessed are going to attack, and I'm going to put one command point into Profane Zeal to see what they can accomplish. Mm -hmm. And pile them in. I'm going to go sweep in. So when they do, and they're going to pray for sustained hits, because I want more sixes to wound, mm -hmm. is what I'm fishing for here. The attacks between the two of them, hitting on threes. They get to do four rerolls. I only want, well, I want lots of hits. I want to gamble for sixes. I ain't playing chaos to not gamble. And I, oh, I owe you a dark pack check on them. I'll do that at the same time mm -hmm. as them. So these are all my hits. Uh, I need six to wound, but they're devastating if I hit them. Because that's what the possessed do. So we got two wounds there. And all right, six uh, feel no pains. It's a profane zeal and devastating wounds. Uh, you take four, not bad. So I'm gonna do the dark, I'm gonna do their leadership check now for the dark pact on the possessed. They're gonna pass with the double six. And then the Terminators are gonna pass with the 10. We got you down to 18. Got you down to two! Oh man, I don't think I'm gonna survive this. And my Vindicare is not doing his job, taking out. Well, he got rid of my, uh, he got yeah, pretty much killed the crap out of them. But he only killed the one on the Dark Apostle. He's not been able to kill those guys yet. The no. Knights have been doing more damage so far. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, now, but I'm rolling my, oh, terrible armor saves. <laughs> yeah, you, you need those, you need those too. Yeah. So you're gonna have Shoulder the Burden uh, until your next turn. So you still have that to work with. Okay. I am, that's the end of the turn. So and unfortunately the, those don't, the secondaries don't, don't happen. And get rid of both of them. Yeah, get rid of it and I just get one command point from those. No, I don't. Yo, cause you got the uh, supply line yeah, earlier. Yeah, supply line. So we're gonna go to my turn three. My two new cards, uh, Storm Hostile Objective. I gotta take an objective away from the Imperial Knights. And to go in line with that, we got Capture Enemy Opost. We have our eyes on the prize. If we can kill that Crusader, that'll be 
quite a bit of victory points. It's this right here, this right here. That's a lot of victory points for us we can get. And those Chaos Terminators are they're working on it. They really are. In my command phase, I am going to see if I have supply lines. Bloop. Yes, I do. do. Even with the two command points, I owe you a bunch of battle shocking. These guys, first of all, they are going to pass. Uh, these guys up here are going to pass. The Chaos Terminator squad had six. They're at three. They don't have to test. You have to be under to test. But those possessed over there might be a little spooked. They are good. I'm just going to roll perfect leaderships all game. Mm -hmm. Scoring, I'll get 10 points on primary for... Uh, I got three of the objectives. Boom, boom, right. and a boom. Is that will conclude the command phase. I am... I'm going to try and do some damage to the Knight Atropos. I suppose he's the Warlord, so it's pretty good if I get the Warlord kill. I have a... Two last cannons. I got a couple last cannons. I do have a unit of Legionnaires I can show up from reserve as well just to get on the table, I guess. So I'll try that out and uh, we'll see how that works. We're going to repossess the, the Chosen. They're going to run towards the Knight Atropos. These possessed are going to move through the ruins and try and help out over here. The last cannons are going to stay still and so the Legionnaires. And then I'm going to bring in my reserves. So the only thing that's really moving are these guys and these guys. So I'll show you where they end up and where the Legionnaires end up. Classic Chosen, they can all fall back, run and charge, and shoot and charge. They're very flexible in their mobility. And then, the, like I said, they're staying still. They're just coming through the ruins a little bit. And from reserves come my other Legionnaires, more than nine away from the Atropos. We're gonna go right to shooting. <laughs> and uh, I am, this guy's got a psychic attack actually, so I'll figure that out. He's gonna try and hit the Crusader with that. Aster Possession is going to try a right of possession on the pilot of the night. We're going to bring him to our side. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so we're going to do two attacks with it. I am going to do a Dark Pact for Sustain. Just because he's part of the Calvorback, the uh, Possessed here, he'll get devastating wounds on this as well. So threes to hit. Uh, that's, yeah, just one hit. And I need a... Nope, that's a fail. Okay. And then Leadership. They're good. Thinking of all the rerolls with Profane Zeal, but I did not want to use Profane Zeal here. <laughs> okay, that's it for him. They cannot shoot, so they will not shoot. And then the you're going to rotate Ion Shields because mm -hmm. I'm going to shoot you with my LAS cannons. And you get minus one to hit because we're in melee with it, your dudes. It is true. Unfortunately, Havocs ignore all modifiers. Ah, that's rolls. right. I don't know why, but they did. They had the stabilizers. They had the dumb claw feet thing. Mm -hmm. So... That's their reasoning. A couple hits. I would have gone for... It was, still, assist, yeah, it was still hit no matter what. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they don't wound, wound. though. Woohoo! And then I owe you a leadership. They're good. Woohoo! Oh. Then we're going to go to the Legionnaires back there. They're going to pray for lethals. Uh, we're going to fire the Melt-A-Gun first, though. Melt-A-Gun. Wounds. All right. Mm. Rotated Ion Shields are still in play. <sighs> Spicy. Let's see. Six to hit. That's two wounds. And these hit. Six to wound. Three saves at three up. Let's see what they got. One damage each. Three ups are usually where you fall. Oh. There, there we have evidence. Six up, feel no pains. Oh. One damage each. Good old bolters and lethals. Ah. Damage. And then they're dark packed. They pass. We can't grenades with the chosen because he's engaged with me, but I can still fire them. And that is just three guys with bolt guns. And here, yeah, these are fours to hit. Uh, lethals. We got one wound. One wound. And he's a three of save, so we know you're gonna fail. Let, let, I'm hedging my bet. Lose. Of course. <laughs> good, it's a good. one. It's, it's a, a call. <laughs> I can't believe it. You gotta feel no pain. One six, I feel no pain. No. Bup, 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 bup. Oh, <laughs> these dice. You just start opting to take your invulnerable saves, even though it's two yeah. degrees worse. You might actually yeah. get those. And leadership. We're good. Nope, nope. But they have an icon. They get the flag. Oh, never mind. They're still smoted. Oh, it's okay, that cost me a Chosen to do that. I was getting bold. Uh, we're gonna lose the guy in the middle. All right. Bring us to some charging. We're gonna charge with those Chosen. Oh! Oh! Interesting. Do I need to command point that? Not really, but I would like to, so I will. We're gonna go seven instead. With that, we're just gonna go get these guys up and in there. And then, I'm gonna try a nine-inch charge over here, just to get more attacks on them. Nine. They're good. Mm -hmm. This guy's lined up to go straight. I'm just going to move this wound mark over here. Boop, 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 About there. And then the last charge I have will be the Possessed into the Crusader. They get plus one of their charge rolls. They go mm -hmm. seven. Definitely a weird charge because that guy could get between those two models. That's the only guy that can get in base contact. So if some of them sling up that way, he gets within an inch and then we keep coherency with these guys. These guys can attack through him. He'll pile in and get within an inch and then the Master of Possessions can attack through him. This guy's going to act as a link in the chain and not be able to attack. I believe that is it for me. 
I am just, I'm already over here, so I'm just gonna go with these chosen first. Mm -hmm. Not chosen, sorry, possessed. They're gonna pile in, these guys are all good. This guy's just gonna go to there, and he'll pile into there, and then that'll keep coherency good. Uh, we've got the master possessions and four possessed attacking. I'm gonna pray for sustained hits. Mm -hmm. As I'm picking up these dice, I gotta remember, I gotta do a hazardous check for that psychic power I tried to do. He's good. 16 attacks on the possessed from the four that can attack. Looking Hitting for on. his sixes. I want sixes big time. Oh, okay. Ooh. So every six is two hits. And they're unmarked, so they get to reroll this. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank uh, you, Nuffle. That's one miss plus one, two, three, four, five. Seven additional hits. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Men's getting his explosion ready. Do you want to roll it before I do my damage? Oh, he's going to explode <laughs> when he dies here. Uh, these are sixes to wound. There that is go. one, two, three, four, five to ten. Feel no pains. And he six deadly demise. Do the possessed who just attacked first. Okay. Uh, four, four of them. They do have a, because they have the master possessions. He does give them a six up. Feel no pain. That kills one of them exactly. Let's lose this guy. Mm -hmm. And then do d six more wounds to the chaos terminators. Whoa. <laughs> one damage. This guys gonna have two wounds left. Um. They can consolidate, they're gonna consolidate towards the objective. Mm -hmm. Consolidating up and around. These guys can't do anything because they didn't charge this turn. And then I am gonna go with the Chosen who charged, and there's only two of them. Before I do that, I owe you a dark pact here. They are good. Not like hard to remember, but it's rare to have a negative to your, I mean the negative is very justified, but mm. it reminds me of old codex writing back in third edition. Gen a general rule of thumb is your codex, for anyone unfamiliar would have, two like beneficial things that mm. your army broke the game with, and then one negative thing that was kind of hard to remember to tell your opponents. That's kind of why they generally took that stuff out. I miss it personally, but I get why they it doesn't exist anymore. Because I see I see a lot of ranting online about Chaos Space Marines that people just keep, like mm. you're, you as the opponent, you have to keep reminding them to do their leadership checks for the dark packs. It's not like they're trying to be malicious or anything. It's just the pace of the game is so quick that it's easy to forget yeah. those. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure I even forgot one this game maybe. And we will go down fighting for the Emperor's love. <laughs> it's the last We night. will not surrender. Maybe they didn't care, but. <laughs> oh, he's for sure gonna surrender. He's gonna slink away yeah, in the shadows exactly. when this goes south. Uh, I got one guy with a power fist and one guy with an accursed weapon. Okay. So power fist guy first. I'm gonna go for, I've been lucky with sustains, but lethals make more sense here. Hmm. Uh, power fist guy hits three times. Uh, no reroll, I'm, I'm divided so I get a reroll there. And one, one. wound, yes. One four up safe. All right, Makes good. it. The accursed weapons. Sorry, I had a issue there with the camera. Got two, one wound effectively. And okay, oh. one hold the mod. Should get a feel in the paint. Six up. Nope. One. The dark patch from those chosen. Five. They do have an icon still. They're good. The legionnaires get to pile in as well. These legionnaires are going to have 15 attacks amongst them. Uh, I'm going to go for lethal hits here, naturally. We roll ones because I'm unmarked. We've got two wounds and the threes hit. Six is to follow up, so a total of three saves. We naturally understand that these three ups are probably not going to be the exactly. best. Exactly. And lo and behold, we fail another one. Okay. Well, I guess that's average though and at then, that point. And then feel no pain? Yeah. One damn. Nope. My dark pact. We're good. You get to attack back. I assume you'd like to go for those possessed over there. Oh, yeah. Before they get to go. You got 12 wounds left on yourself. Six attacks. High intensity. Threes. We can reroll one of the ones. Yeah, you can There's four one. ones in there. All right, so we got four hits because of the sustain. sustain. And two's to wound. With a reroll, if oh. you need it. Three wounds right to my demon saves. Every fail is a dead possessed. Oh, one's still alive. One's still alive. Pre-trained corn. Boom. <laughs> four attacks on that possessed. I'm just going to go sustains just to try and get more attacks out of him. He is unmarked. Okay, nice. So two more hits in there. Uh, six to wound. All right. Oh, that wow. Is, this this is one possess just did six mortal wounds. Well, six devastating wounds. Six feel no pains. You have to do this twice. Uh, it's two damage each. Oh, yeah. And he just did four damage. And then leadership check. <laughs> he's, he's probably out of here. He's probably about to die. Yeah, he's gone. He's dead. Against me. Eight wounds left. He somehow does against the odds and then is still punished by the gods. Oh, with the way that all worked out, I still don't take the objective from you over here. So that one's gonna be yours. However, I do snag the objective over there, here. Yeah. So that is gonna be five victory points for the secondary, but I also take your objective yeah. from you for eight victory points, giving me 13 points on secondary. And we're working on the Warlord kill. All right, so this is the end of turn three. We're about to go to turn four. I'm going to try something a little different. Me and Min 
are going to play with the rest of this game off camera. And I'm going to summarize what's going to happen here because it looks like it's going to be a chaos victory. So we'll give you the final score of it and we'll jump into a post game. But we'll see. You never know. Stranger things can happen. My total score is 45, 47, and you're currently at 25. Mm -hmm. So I am up by about 22 victory points. But we're going to play out the rest of this game and summarize how it ends. Now, bear with me here, guys, because this is my first attempt at trying to do a summarization of like the last elements of the game. Yes, the Imperial Knight did die on. Actually, the last one of the last things I did on turn five. So uh, we went on to Min's turn four. He drew uh, Cleanse and... Uh, assassination? Oh, Overwhelming Force. Assassination was on the okay. next turn. So you didn't cleanse, but you killed them in, with the la low intensity Laz Cutter, just one shot them, and then killed one guy in melee. Uh, and then you got your three points for Overwhelming Force, which wasn't too bad. And then the Vindicare Assassin yet again failed to try and kill. In fact, he tried to shoot the big gun at minus four at them. He tried to shoot them with Ignorance the Cover. They both made six up saves. Just two six up saves from him and him. And then on my turn four, I tried to kill him, and I couldn't, I got him down a couple of wounds, nothing too crazy. Uh, my cards were no prisoners and extend battle line. So what I did is I retreated my chosen and there was no battle shock fails anywhere on this turn. So I retreated my chosen. I was too far away to throw grenades, but I was close enough to get the extend battle lines on this objective because I didn't want to move anything else there. The last cans didn't do anything. Nothing really did anything. I moved up my possessed to try to make a charge. I failed my charge, but I also tried to assassinate the pilot of the night with the Master Possessions, who did do a couple of damage. In fact, he's the only guy who did damage, but he also uh, hurt himself a little bit and exposed himself. I was around here with him. So the Vindicare Assassin tried to take a shot at him and you better believe he rolled. No, I made a, uh, I had an invulnerable save. I had to re I rolled a one mm -hmm. on the invulnerable save and then I re-rolled it to pass. So the Vindicare did not quite get the character kill. These guys just stood out here the whole time. And that was my turn four. So nothing really happened. I accumulated a few victory points. Uh, and then on Min's turn five, he had cleanse and assassination as his cards. And he just couldn't kill that guy. He just couldn't do it. But we did cleanse because there was nothing nearby threatening him. There was just that one chosen that was over here. So he got his three victory points for cleanse, didn't shoot, kind of ended the game there. My turn, I just ran up towards him. Ultimately, all they did was throw grenades and killed him. That was kind of it. I, I auto passed his, uh, I used insane bravery just to make sure I could walk up and throw grenades. I tried to kill him with the last cannon first to make it a little more dramatic, but just, I just couldn't get through your invulnerable save. So I got screwed, here's grenades. My plot armor way to kill the knight, so he falls over dead with that. We get Warlord kill, we'll get Line Breaker. We scored a couple of our secondaries and when we wrapped up the primary as well. So this is kind of the state of the game. The Vindicare is still alive. The Knight Atropos succumbs to the, the overpowered grenade stratagem. And this is where my units kind of end up. I, oh, the Legionnaires poked their heads out here to get some shots at him, but that didn't really matter. So I'll show you the final score and then Min and myself are gonna go into a post game. We got 82 on primary secondary plus nine, uh, which would be 91 points in total. And then Min, after getting as many points as he could, got 20 in primary. Uh, there's nothing with this score at the end of the game. Uh, plus, you know, 20 here, so that's 39. Plus two for the first blood, so we got 30, sorry, 41? Yeah, 41. 41 to the Chaos Space Marines, very high score here. But that kind of comes down to like, it was like four Imperial Knights and we weren't drawing the best secondaries. And you weren't making the best saves either. No, they weren't. But we're gonna go ahead and tidy up a little bit. We're gonna set up for a little post-game chat here. We'll mm -hmm. talk about the game. We're gonna talk about the nonprofit and uh, just generally wargaming with kids and games with kids in general. Mm -hmm. And uh, stay tuned for that if you're interested. And in the mini wargaming vault, paired with this battle report you just watched, you better believe we continue the escapades in the galaxy of Warhammer 40k. It'll be Luca against Stefan in this match. New Necrons against their ancient enemy, the Eldar. And we're playing with one of the new Necron detachments. So if you're interested in checking out this battle report, and you're not a YouTuber vault member, all you have to do is click on the link down below to sign up for a 7 day free trial where you can check it out as well as the rest of the content we have in the vault to go along with it. Thanks again for checking out this video and I'll catch you all next time very soon. Well everyone, that is that 40k battle report trying a more casual approach to uh, the post game. Not that my previous one was that formal, I guess, technically <laughs> it wasn't really, it was more just a waving the camera around all over the place. So uh, uh, we that would very, spoilers. If you're jumping to this now before finishing the rest of the game, you're gonna absolutely be spoiled on this. <laughs> You've been warned. That went horribly for the Chaos Knights. Uh, Imperial Knights. 
Sorry, Imperial Knights. Yes, that went horribly for the Imperial Knights. Uh, mostly in the save department. And uh, though, to be fair, playing Chaos Space Marines, they can kind of deal with any threat because they have access to lethal or sustain against any foe. Now, technically, any army I would have played here would have been that, like, Necrons are all lethal hits, Chaos Space Marines are all lethal hits. Um, I would have played Chaos Knights as the other option. I, like, I don't like to do Imperial. Most of my armies I play are Imperial. I don't like to do Imperial on Imperial. Mm -hmm. So most of the nasty things I could play would have been a good matchup for the Knights anyways. But this was a good showing of, like, just a few bad rolls in the wrong spot can really amount to mm -hmm. a lot. And uh, just, well, we were talking a little bit off camera about it, like the point, like you had armagers in your list because you like the four, like you like the three big guys, but then the armagers, you know, they, the big guys got more expensive, more expensive, and then the armagers kind of had to take the cut mm -hmm. overall. Yeah. So uh, the idea, uh, well, this is just a battle report in general, but uh, Min is here from, uh, well, California, California, I, you, the <laughs> Bay Area. Like, I'm, I'm very like I find the, the the geography of like the descriptions of California to be very confusing because like yeah. North Carol North Carolina, North California isn't quite north. all North California. There's like it's like mid North Car Cal I keep saying Carolina, North Carolinas. I know a guy from North Carolina. I say North Carolina a lot, but and then like South California isn't necessarily is it all the South? It's pretty much like Los Angeles and area, and then anything from like. SoCal is like from Los Angeles all the way up to like the like, like lower mid. That's kind of like central California where our farmlands are. Okay. And then NorCal, NorCal is like the San Francisco Bay Area. Okay. So that's San Francisco, San Jose, a little bit uh, Oakland and whatnot. Or that's more like the East Bay. And it's like, is, is like Sacramento included in that or is that like somewhere else? It's like it's a too, far, too much too farther away. So the capital is too far. Yeah. Too far, okay, that, fair. That, that, that ain't NorCal. All right, fair. <laughs> Understood. But you, were from, you said you're from like the Bay Area yourself. Mm -hmm. And like you kind of operate a nonprofit organization yeah. with your team mm -hmm. where you're trying to integrate uh, young individuals into war gaming in general for educational purposes, generally. Mm -hmm. why, don't you, why don't you give the spiel? Okay. So um, our, our nonprofit is called PBG uh, Education, Phoenix Fusion Group, is okay. a combination of vision and fusion together where we try to not to say revolutionize education, but it's like we have to modernize it. Now there's oh, some yeah. things that work in the past, don't necessarily work now, but there are some traditions in the past that still do work that's kind of missing in today's education. Especially in the importance of, you know, children. They're so much time on the screen and computers that like well, I don't think I, was, video I, I was one of them growing yeah. up, like mostly like computers and PlayStation and stuff like that. Yeah, but not like the like but the, the cell phone, phone yeah, and exactly. the iPads, and we didn't have that growing up. I guess up. it wasn't as much as some kids today might be, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. Um, we're kind of like seeing how it's actually negatively affecting kids, and mm. COVID really did not help that at all. Yeah, because I'm, I'm I, this I have I am 100% ignorant. And I I don't have a, I don't have any kids myself. I don't really know what the the, the scope of that might actually be. Mm -hmm. And I could assume it's probably pretty high. Yeah. And so what we're trying to do is trying to pull kids off of technology, away from the iPads, away from the cell phone, mm. and do like hands-on activities. You know, being able to use you know your hands to actually move the pieces, to actually think creatively you know how to find solutions and you know, knowing that when your plan doesn't necessarily work how well you can pivot to be able to like oh adapt to the situation and you no know, and be okay with it and it's much. not it's not just war gaming it'd be like other, well, board, other games. board games too as well critical thinking critical right? thinking yeah. lateral thinking yeah exactly and so essentially we're trying to say you know like yes we are using a game but we're not trying to promote the hobby we're yeah. trying to promote this is you know this can and will help children to actually understand that you can learn and play together, but yeah. you actually learn skills that actually help you in, as you get older, kind of like us, like kind of like you. Yeah. You, like we play games, but you're on the YouTube channel now. Right, well, I was doing it professionally. Like the idea, like I get it too, because everyone has different drives, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm a, like, I, 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 would, I would wonder if I'm a good candidate for it, because like when I was growing up, school was more of a means to an end. Mm -hmm. Whatever it wasn't, like I didn't care. I did, I did fine. I did what I had to do. I went there, came back. But I want to say I learned more from all the video. Like, it sounds stupid, but, like, I'm sure maybe a lot of you can relate. I remember a lot more of the things that I learned while playing video games because that's where my passion was. That's where I put 100% of my focus. Mm -hmm. So whatever I read or whatever I did or whatever I learned, I retained much better. And I remember some of the first – I started playing Warhammer 40K and Lord of the Rings back when I was eight. And I still remember – all of the little interactions, especially in like late second edition 40k, early third, the, it's the simple math on like a bolter trying to hurt a rhino, right? So you have to you have to you have to devise what facing you're looking at, 
And then you have to like, okay, well, it's armor 10, and I'm strength 4 on the... It's armor 10 on the back, I'm strength 4. So I have to roll a 6 on a d6 to get my strength 4 to strength 10 to hurt the rhino enough, right? Mm -hmm. That's just one quick little example of all the math you would have needed. You have to memorize, like, then you get good distance on, like, like you can gauge, like, how much measurements might mm -hmm. be based on the system you're using. And, like, there's, like, this game is just littered with math. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and critical thinking. And, and lots of reading, too, as well. Like, oh, those codexes, I... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I mean, we want we could like uh, our, the codex says like you know there's a lot of literature in there, a lot of storytelling elements, yep. and it helps improve your vocabulary and understand sentence structure. I I forget that element of the codex is often because like it's just so ingrained in me for like the job aspect. If I, I get like get your hands on a new codex, you skim through the narrative, you read it, but like say it's like the Necron Codex. A lot of that narrative I've read when I was a kid, right? That mm -hmm. didn't change too 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 much. So I skimmed through it, but I forgot what it was like reading it for the first time. Mm. Right, and then that's true for every other codex, and all the all the lore that's just l filled in these books is just that's a lot of reading, and you, they don't use easy vocabulary either. Mm -hmm. No, they don't. No, they 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 this it, well, it's written kind of for adults, but like young kids too, right? Actually, mm -hmm. I don't even know what the recommended age group is technically for like Warhammer in general. I would assume twelve plus or ten plus mm -hmm. or something, but I mean. I was eight when I started learning. I don't know how much I comprehended it. I think I would have done better. I started doing better around like 10, 11 myself. Yeah, especially when you have like a adult mentor to help yes. like, to guide you there. And, and this is kind of like what we do. Like yeah. we would take the complicated things and break it down for children to understand. So it's like, oh, that's how, it's not as complicated as I thought. I, and then they, they play it yeah. and they enjoy it and they learn you know, stati they learn statistics, probability, just using dice rolls. They're able to gauge distances. Um, now, sometimes even without a realize, oh, that's about 12 inches, that's maybe 16. Yeah. And they also learn, you know, like risks and rewards. Like, if I do this, is this worth it to pull that off? And so there's a lot of lateral learning as a part of miniature wargaming that is often like overlooked in the, by the yeah. general uh, education. Uh, I see you might like trying to convince like a parent or something. Might, mm -hmm. They might think like, ah, it's not worth their time. Like they mm -hmm. could be doing something else more productive or whatever. But I'm sure a lot of you watching with children of your own have probably thought about eventually getting them into the hobby maybe. And I know a lot, I know, I know personally a lot of you have. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it's been quite successful, but mm -hmm. uh, to anyone out there who's been considering it, uh, one good opportunity coming up is that Scarry and Min are going to be recording a video for us tomorrow. But for you guys watching, it'll be out in, I want to say like a week or two-ish mm -hmm. from watching this, where it's going to be, it's going to be about a 1,000 point game, but it's going to be more focused on, not like, kind of like a how to play, a learn to play, but more focused for children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like what age group are you thinking to hit? Uh, we're maybe like... 8 plus, 10 plus, like kind of like we're going to have fun, you know, we're going to like show you guys how the mechanics work and even show the education aspect that, you know, parents may not necessarily realize like how much miniature wargaming actually helps children in developing, you know, lifelong skills to actually help them later in life. Well, like, yeah, like I can't like go into like, like all the history I learned from like random little games, like albeit some of it wasn't as accurate as it, as it could be, but like Age of Empires, all mm. the stuff I remember from Age of Empires 1 and 2. Resource management, yeah. you know, you know X, X this, Y this, Z this, and then, yep. oh, there you go. It's like I need to, okay, it's going to take me five minutes to harvest enough meat to get to the next age, mm -hmm. so I have to like, in, if I increase my meat productivity, I can get there in four minutes instead of five minutes, mm -hmm. but I'm going to sacrifice from my wood gain, or like if I build more, more villagers to make more meat, that means I'm technically using meat to make them, so at what point is it more efficient to stop making villagers mm -hmm. and then just ha like store up your meat? Like that's that's a like real time strategies were like they were a lot more abundant when we were kids oh, growing yeah. up though. Starcraft, yeah, yeah. Warcraft, and but, and it's, and hopefully they might make a comeback. You know, yeah, they are kind of on the down low oh, there right a little now. bit, but I'm not too sure why because I really like those games still. But that, mm -hmm. that could be just like nostalgia for me. But mm -hmm. I found that they were amazing because there was mm -hmm. a lot of math in there. They still kind of exist, but they're. I find them to be like more like different scale, like Civilization and like Total War games and stuff like bigger scale nowadays as opposed to like maybe the, the limitations of the And there's also the yes. instant gratification now that's happening. Ah, that's yeah. true, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just like constant, constant dopamine hits. Go, 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 yeah. go. Yeah, versus you know, planning out long term, like what's yeah. your short term strategy, your long term strategy, and how do we yeah. build towards, like the, like planning goals, setting goals. Yeah. Oh, realistic goals and knowing steps how to get there and that's a key skill that um, we see that a lot is missing and kind of like how like Warhammer 2 as well or in any miniature game you actually learn to make your micro goals and your macro goals yes. and see where you could go from there. Well so, yeah simple one for like a game of 40k would be like my macro goal is to win or 
to kill your warlord or something. Mm -hmm. I want to do this one thing in this game. And then every little goal is like what you're trying to accomplish every turn, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And like you get like the instant gratification from the little, the tiny elements. Like I made that nine inch charge or like my melt a gun hit, wounded and did six damage. That felt really good. But then the major goal is the end of the game, the memory of the game, mm -hmm. the win, the loss, whatever kind of dramatic thing happened. But Warhammer is not a short game by any means. So it would take like two to three hours to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. And like that's better than like quick little like dopamine hits where it's like boom, yeah. boom, done, move on to the next one. You kind of forget, you forget yeah. everything. I mean, right? you guys yeah, like yeah. saw my game, I had, I hit like a lot of good initial goals, oh. but then all of a sudden things were just not panning out like his uh, guys with the big last cannons. I just could not nope. ping them that. I lost three to mm. your uh, uh, rapid fire battle cannon. Mm. That was the only thing, that, and you shot at them with a lot, a lot of things yeah. too. Yeah, and, and they just survived. And and then they had, I learned the pivot. So I was like, okay, those are the, these guys no longer the primary goal. I need to get those guys now. And it's like knowing how to readjust. And it's like, yeah. oh, you fail? Well, die with honor, right? Yeah. Well, and sometimes like even even for kids, like it's good to learn when like I know and I know personally, kids can they could be a little rough sports. They don't mm -hmm. like to lose so much, typically. Mm -hmm. So that, that that's a good, that at some point they got to learn that. At some yeah. point they got to learn to be so, humble. A little yeah, bit better too, so. to lose <laughs> in the game yeah. than not being able to handle it in real life. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So mm -hmm. it gives you maybe a little Practice. bit of experience at dealing with uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, anything kind yeah. of annoying or like frustrating. Win with humility, but yeah. lose with dignity. Yeah, there exactly. You know. I don't. I don't know exactly when that comes because I. Mm -hmm. I was not a good loser when I was younger, and yeah. I really, really feel like that didn't get better until I was yeah. like thirty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I kind of even a couple times in my thirties, I could be kind of a sour yeah. sport, but yeah. that's more. Yeah, right, like in a speech in the bay, like my senior. Like my first two years, I was not getting into final and any of like the top eight until my senior year, and then you, you you get all the way up, and then just when I was just like about to get a state tournament, I fell short by one, and that's my senior year. And yeah, I, I took it hard, but like you have to take it in stride. It's just like um, how you win is just important as how you lose too as well, yeah. and like how you're able to bounce back. And it's important, you know, when you fall down, you have to know be able to pull yourself back up. Like you get that F, yeah. like well. Come back and like, how can you be better? Be better. Like, and just hope you just look for a better. Yeah, you just have to always believe. You know, just because you fail, it is not the end. It's kind of like what Batman says. You know, like, like Bruno Bruce. You know, what do you do when we fall? We get back up. We get back up. So uh, I wonder. A little part of me wonders because, like, it's a. It might be a. It's a stupid anecdotal example, but. I remember like back in like 2009, 2010, MOBAs were getting really, really popular. Cause I always played Dota growing up. Mm -hmm. And then like League of Legends and Dota 2 and Heroes of New Earth all became really big. Well, Heroes of New Earth never big. I loved Heroes of New Earth though. But Dota 2 and League of Legends were getting really big and like me and my friends were all collectively getting into it, but they were just such the worst losers ever. And now like Salty, all that stuff. But I just, it might sound airy, but I just never cared. I just never got tilted, whatever. Just, we're gonna play another game. Mm -hmm. Then the other game's gonna be better. We're just gonna try again. But like, if you're gonna be mad, you're not gonna be able to do as well as you could. And mm -hmm. I want to say it's because of all the really frustrating freaking Warhammer games <laughs> I would play. So you just have like a horrible game of Warhammer. You spend hours and hours and hours painting a new unit, and you put it on the table, and it just fails the morale check and runs away right away. So you just wasted. Didn't waste those hours, but that unit's not gonna do anything. And you were so excited for that one unit to do mm. something. Nothing else mattered. You wanted that one unit to do something, but as we all know, freshly painted units are often the worst to have mm. on the table. Yeah. And that's, I'm not really a superstitious person, but dice, no, the, the freshly painted units always have me suspicious. But I was, I've always found growing up, like as much as I would get salty here and there, not as much as my friends did. And I wondered, I always wondered why. I always wondered why, it's like, it doesn't matter that much. We're just gonna play another game. Mm -hmm. We're just hopefully gonna do better in the next game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, I always felt like it helped me out. Like led, yeah. to, led to a lot more success in, in those games in particular. Like patience is key. Mm -hmm. Like if you're playing a game of Warhammer and you're gonna have a temper tantrum in the middle of that game, you're not gonna play the rest of that game well. I guarantee it, that you're gonna keep and spiraling. Especially like other people will see you. It's like, oh, I don't want to play with that I don't want to play with that guy yeah. anymore either, right? And it, like that's the other thing about these kind of board games, card games, uh, you don't want to be, war games. Yeah, you won't be that, that yeah. salty sport that no one wants to be around with anymore because if they see you how you are as a person, yeah. they're kind of like, yeah, you know, in like, like life skills, social skills, you know. That's know, another major Knowing how to yeah. control your disappointments. Yes. And then that way, like even, even, even if like, you know, you're growing up or whatever and you're having a having a hard time like uh, interacting with other people, playing games with other people, and you're kind of throwing temper tantrums or you're, have, you're a sore loser in general, you might actually like see that and recognize that. 
at some point, and then you'd be able to rein that mm -hmm. kind of personality in and like realize like, or you'd be like upfront with them, it's like, hey, I might get like a little salty in this mm -hmm. game, and like I don't mean any ill will towards mm -hmm. you. It's just that's just who I am, and that person's like that. That 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 kind of like, like speech at the beginning of the game is like, I, everything's good now. Yeah, chill. And then it's just like <laughs> knowing that we can still be friends after yeah, yeah. you know, win or lose. Yeah, that's that's the most important thing, and. That's that, that's what you try to teach kids. That's kind of like the goal here, like more yeah. like uh, edge, like getting out there, trying things like this out, and uh, like I know, like playing a lot of Magic growing up, I liked Magic, mm -hmm. like that great card, like a card game as an example, and like I just like interacting with other people. I didn't, I, I never realized if it was important or not, mm -hmm. but it made me a lot more of a sociable person to this mm -hmm. day. Like I, I just constantly crave social activities. Like realistically, this job here has I've never met you in my life before, but we mm -hmm. hung out for eight hours all day today, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people I've never met before, but I just. They come by, they know me, I don't really know them that well, maybe, and it's just, I always hit it off. It's always yeah. like a great experience. Yeah, especially yeah. like, yeah, reputation is important. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you don't realize, like, if someone you don't know might know who you are, oh, you're the sour sport, and then that, that kind of is already, like, coloring out their initial perception of you, so they actually meet you in person, it's kind of like, oh, I don't know if I like you because you're, like, this type of person. Yeah. So, like, reputation is very important. First impressions yeah. matter. <laughs> first impressions matter. And then, first impressions definitely yeah, matter. I think I, there was like a quote from the Kingdom of Heaven, you know, like, um, like your reputation would be known by other people, even your enemies, before they even met you. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and that's important, you know, knowing to be, always be like the happy, jovial, go happy go lucky person. You want to be the per people want to hang yeah. out with, right? I, just, I especially if you watch Kingdom of Heaven, it's just like they were enemies, but even from, uh, you also learn from the movie Troy, like even enemies can show each other respect. Yes. And that's, that's important. That's one of my favorite that's movies. Movie. Yeah. Troy's one of my favorite movies. I love that movie yeah. so freaking much. Oh man, they're all like great examples. Like something like, I don't know, like uh, if, if you're watching this and like next week comes around, you see the video of Scary and Min here, and maybe you're like, you have a kid, eight, nine, 10 years old, maybe, the, and if they're interested or not interested, maybe you hang out, check out the video with them or not. Yeah. That's that goal. Or if you're a grandparent that actually sees, you know, like the, like the plague of like technology affecting your kids and you want to convince your kids to convince their kids who actually don't participate in these miniature war games or even just board games in general with, you know, like a social group or even a, a, um, a teaching class, maybe this might be the video to help you know, convince your kids that you know their grandkids, their education and learn their life skill learning is very important and start now. Yeah, this kid, like I, like I said, I don't know much about it, but I've I've heard of these 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 worries, like uh, all the screen time, just being like on like young kids with phones mm. or like on iPads or whatever it might be like. That kind of stuff. Then again, you know, I, I know some parents restrict that kind of stuff. Like mm. a guy who works here, right? He's like, oh, he, he, I don't even think he has a cell phone technically himself. He just hates it. But that's like, yeah, that's that, that's for mm. them. I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting. It's kind of scary, I suppose, in a lot of ways too. And it's mm. like education. I know education is like really different now too, because I got a couple of friends who are teachers, mm. and the way they talk about education seems very different <laughs> than oh, what yeah. I was growing up too. So I don't know what's going on there, but for better or worse, whatever it might yeah. be, right? Things change, yeah. times change, yeah. all that but stuff. Yeah. Regardless of uh, whether we're on whichever side of the river we're on, we do agree, you know, that like teaching kids properly is what we all agree on. It's yeah. just the method is like where we tend to disagree on. And we're just trying to like show not like we're not here to replace education. We're here to supplement it and give them more yeah. versus taking stuff away. Well, so I, yeah, I just I pretty much remember just learning a lot I was a, a lot more focused on games and problem solving. Mm -hmm than anything else and growing up i remember school sure i'm sure i do but i remember a lot more of uh my passions growing up instead yeah. and like it it's also kind of like i wonder if i always wonder if like kids have a hard time finding hobbies or because it's like one of those like mm -hmm. how else does a kid find a hobby other than their parent introducing them to different aspects and different hobbies that are available or their them. friends or their friends themselves mm -hmm. right Cause or like, or they pass by that one store like for me i it was i think it was and that's, it was, I don't think it was, I think it was like a games workshop that was in my mall. I was like, oh, I was, I was always interested in learning, but I never got into it. And then, and different mall I went to college, and then I was like, oh, um, this game store. And then I was like, oh, now I'm interested in learning. Yeah. And then I wa walked, what's in there? You check it out, right? Because I remember yeah. I was only really gotten into it because my friend's father, who would babysit me when my mother was working, was into it. And he tried to teach his son how to play, but it just wasn't clicking. So he figured, what if I taught both of them at the same time? They, maybe they'll learn better interacting with each other. Mm -hmm. And that was, for whatever reason, a great... He just acted as a mediator mm -hmm. of the rules. And even though we weren't doing something correctly, which is, I think, the important thing, is if you notice that they're having fun and mm -hmm. still, like, learning the game a little bit, just kind of, like, let them do their thing mm -hmm. and figure it out. Because I remember strictly trying to continuously kill rhinos with guns that weren't strong enough. And he'd be like, you know, like... 
the math doesn't line up on it. You understand that, right? He's like, I do, I do, but I don't really have anything else to shoot, and I want to shoot the guns anyways. I'm like, he's like, okay, that's fine. It don't matter to me. It's all good. Yeah, because no, that's what you're having fun. Then, then yeah. later on, that's when your brain starts clicking. All right, now I want to know how to kill that thing. Now I want to learn how to do better. Right? Yeah. Like, I couldn't deal with that rhino. How do I deal with that? Maybe I'll look through the rules. I'll read mm. a little bit or whatever, mm. right? And, and, like, you know, like some kids like sports, some kids like singing, some kids mm. like dancing, some kids like to play yeah. with toys, you know? And, and, <laughs> and, and as educators, we're trying to help kids unlock that potential. Like, mm. what is actually their drive yep. to actually want to be better? Because, you know, Anyone could be in front of a book and you know, yeah. take a pen and pencil and you know write write it out, but like that's not their passion. And yep. they and when they grow up, you know, stuck with a job they don't like, you know, there's that stress and everything. And you actually have hobbies like these, you know, whether it's painting or singing piano, they will have a way to de-stress, yeah. and that way they can have, have more fulfilling lives, and they don't, it doesn't feel so bleak. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, for me, school was always a means to an end. I was always looking forward to after school and learning other things I cared about more. And, you know, got through school just fine, but this is always where my passion was. Like, not necessarily just Warhammer, mm -hmm. but like, Literally anything else, like Warhammer, video games, board games, I loved them all. So I was like, anytime that was an opportunity, that's what I would go do, no matter what. Okay. Um, but if you, got, if you guys believe in our vision and, and would love to help out, um, we do have my friend, his name is Leland. Uh, he actually helped commission to paint our Knights of You like saw on the table. Uh, and then so, um, so this is him, uh, Recycling <laughs> with a Vengeance. Uh, you can find him on Facebook or Instagram, and he does commission work. So he will donate a hefty sum of his you know, commissions to help support our nonprofit program. So if you wanna, if you wanna get your models painted and you wanna help a nonprofit, here you go. It'll be in the description down below too, okay. the uh, the Instagram link and all that all right. stuff too to check then, out his work. Yeah, and we'll send a link our website there too as well. Yes, exactly. Anyways, folks, that is it for this one. Thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for the upcoming 40K Battle Report between Skari and Min, mm -hmm. uh, where you're playing Chaos Demons, and I think Skari is playing Black Templar. So it's a pretty fitting matchup there. Awesome. And uh, again, 1,000 points, more educational than a strict traditional battle mm -hmm. report. And, uh, well, there's only one way to find out what it's going to be like, and that will be by watching it. All right. So we'll catch you there. Thank you again for the game. Thank mm -hmm. you for rolling with the punches. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a rough one. But sometimes that happens. And that's Moral kinda... victories. I blew up your land raider and I killed your dark apostle. <laughs> I rarely lose that land raider, and I rarely lose it in that fashion. So it just got one tap. So that was kind of uh, memorable for me, at least, mm -hmm. too. Anyways, folks, that's it for this game. Catch you all next time for some more 40K. Happy war gaming as always. There we go. Okay. Perfect. That's it. Perfect. We did the thing. Whew. What time is it? Uh, four. Perfect. I usually want to be done by 4.30. Yeah. So. Wow.